I have to immediately thank you for tuning into the second episode and offer a heartfelt apology for the noise levels in the last one. I had some feedback that it was a bit too loud on the music during the intro and the outro, so I will never do that again. In today's episodes, I'm going to walk you through laying down the first foundation floors of our factory, building our first biomass power plant, right after I take you through the milestones of Tiers 1 and 2. But the night is young, so grab a pop and join me on an adventure. Okay, Pioneers, here we find ourselves back at the hub terminal. Tier 1 is full of goodies, including base building, logistics, and field research, which are going to give us floors and walls, the ability to split and raise in the lower materials, and the field research, which gives us a map, and the MAM, which is going to be used to unlock further advancements. Tier 2 includes part assembly, introducing the assembler, which allows us to combine two parts into one more advanced part. Obstacle clearing, which includes a chainsaw. That's cool. Jump pads for fun and traversing our factory. The resource sync program, which is a great way to not waste any materials. And the logistics mark two, which include faster belts, stackable conveyor poles, which are going to be very useful. Let's start out with getting the things for base building. We just need to pop over to get some concrete. Turn this, excuse me, limestone, turn this into concrete. And just like that, I think we're about ready to launch these materials back to space. Let's check. Oh, we're a few plates shy. And we appear to be out of power. I am going to immediately want to try to get that chainsaw because gathering up those leaves by hand was not very efficient or very fun, so. Still being fed, so we just need to wait a couple seconds here and then we can start laying down our foundations. Milestone reach. You have unlocked several structures aimed to provide the first needed to build basic factory infrastructure and improved overview. Building these will provide a grid for more advanced organizing and sectioning of your factory. I love it. I love it. Okay. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm going to teach you about zooping. Zooping is a way that we're able to lay down a lot of items at once, whether it be walls or railings or ladders or floors, uh, foundations, roofs. It's just a lot of fun. Let me show you. Okay, I'm going to go into our build menu, go down to foundations, which we just opened up. This milestone unlocked for us one, two, and four meter foundations, and then one, two, and four meter ramps. I like to start with four meter foundations because it gives us a little bit of clearance off the ground. Now, now that I have a little bit more of, actually, no, I vowed, I vowed to use the options given us, and we have unlocked the lookout tower, so I'm going to use it for building. Jump up on the ladder, head on up, and we'll get a bird's eye view of what we're doing. Oh, I can hear the drop pod coming back already, that's cool. You can't fill it up with material while it's gone, so... If we had have worked hard enough or stockpiled, we could immediately send the next milestone. But we'll get into that shortly. Zoop! There it is! Foundations, four meter. Now, I can put this anywhere. Included. It Pretty much. Complete. I can't put it in midair, but if I can attach it to a structure, it will let me build it there for the most part. And then you can just interconnect them like that to make a basic floor. But I have zooping to show you. To dismantle multiple things like this, you're going to hit the F button and then hold the left control, and anything you highlight will be dismantled. I don't want to dismantle that from out beneath us, so I'll just deselect it by hitting control again. 
All right, pull up the foundations again. And in fact, for right now, I'm gonna put that to number five on my hotbar. Hit five. I'm gonna press R to enter build mode zoop. You can see it there underneath the hologram. I can do default vertical, which goes up and down, and then zooping, which is left and right. You can zoop up to 10 items at once. Before I show you that, I wanna add one quick little comment, and that's the entire world has a preset grid you can build on. You can hold left control while looking at the ground with a foundation, and you'll see I cannot rotate this. I cannot, uh, actually I can rotate it, but it just snaps 90 degrees each time. So, I'm gonna try to build on the fact or the worldwide grid for the first time. And I'm in zoop mode, so I'm just going to left click and I'm going to paint the world with my foundations. Of course, I don't have enough concrete for this uh, to do much or to do any more than this, so we can't start our full factory yet. So, we should remedy that by building a automated concrete constructor. We're going to need a minor mark one to pull the resources out of the ground and then constructors to turn the limestone directly into concrete. So going to go to production, add a minor mark one. The limestone doesn't need to be smelted. It goes directly into a constructor. Okay, there we have it. We are ready. Let's head on over to the limestone node and build our first automated, fully automated material component. I'm going to start right here by grabbing some power because we're going to need to power the machines over here. And I'm just going to trail it as I go. Right there. Wire is too long. So that's that is how far you can run the wires. That's nice and flat right here. Let's oop. I see these haven't been picked up yet, so let's pick up the miner, get him out of the way, because we're going to go with a powered one. Production, miner mark one. And it snaps right to the node. I'll tell you all about the different nodes later. They have different purity levels that produce different amounts of materials and that's basically the gist of it. I will show you when we get to pure nodes how different they are. Okay now that I've powered that if I interact with it it'll tell me that it's going to produce 60 per minute. I think I told you last episode, if you go into the logistics, the Minor Mark 1s can transport 60 per minute. So it, we're in the boot and shoe business, as my mom would say. I'm gonna stand right in front of this to line it up. Create a constructor. Remember that green line's for centering? I'm gonna hold left control to click it to it, and now I can just run it in and out along that line. That should be fine. And now, and belt it, belt it in. And it's gonna go fully efficiently because this is producing 60, that's moving 60. And this needs 45. Oh bother. Well, I can't do anything about that right now because I can't split the belt line yet. And I can't adjust the speed of the machines yet. But that will be coming very soon. Let's put a bin, a bin, I always say a bin, it's the storage container. And Stockpile them. So now, as soon as this gets power, there it goes. It's going to be making concrete for us as long as we have power. I just want to reiterate, hopefully for the last time, one last time, uh, that this will never run out of materials. So as long as I have power, this will forever run. Which is pretty cool. It will stop. <laughs> I contradicted myself right there. Uh, about 10 seconds after I set it, but it will stop if this bin fills up, this line will back up, and once it hits the max stack size in here, it will stop working then, but if we were to remove some from the container, it would immediately start up again. 
I'm gonna let that go for a few minutes so we can stockpile some resources and start zooping up a whole factory floor. In fact, now that I've arrived over at the iron plate constructor, I see it's running out of iron ingots quickly. So what I could do now to solve that is make another Mark I miner. Put it on this iron node right here. Connect it to some power. You'll see that this is only making 30 iron ore per minute. That's half the other one. The other limestone node was a normal node, and this is impure. So impure are half as good as normal nodes. Just for the time being. I'm gonna run it. Uh... Not straight. Yeah. Yeah. Not straight. That's what we'll go with. It's great, though. It's fine. And we're just about out of power. A little dip there. And we're getting quite low on power here. Let's see what we need for obstacle clearing. We do not have enough stuff. So before I can make all that stuff, I need a temporary solution. So I'm going to go grab some biomass by hand. And this last little bit should give us two full stacks of leaves. Yes, there. That should be enough for right now. Let's head back. Okay, what did we need again? We needed... 500 screws, 100 cable, and 100 concrete. We will be three short of the cable if we were to craft all this up. We can definitely craft up the screws that, we're in, that we need. We could craft up 67 concrete. We already have 45, and I think by the time I craft the other items, the constructor should have made us that much automatically. So why don't I run, gather those resources, and then we can check in, nip over, and grab the concrete out of the container. Look at that. Running on a floor is so much more efficient. And 115 in there. I'm so excited to just have something automated now. It's really wonderful when you can just take a take a deep breath and have the resources you need stockpiling. We'll be fully able to unlock obstacle clearing right now. And then hopefully we can construct the chainsaw right away. Let's send it up. Zoop! I used that wrong. Milestone reach. No regrets. Biofuel will ensure maximum efficiency of biomass burners. I love Today this thing. In biofuel production, you are now capable of removing foliage that consists primarily What uh, Ada was saying there is <clears throat> part of that milestone. I'll show you. Part of that milestone additionally included the solid biofuel, which is the... Oh, actually, I'm not sure if it's the most efficient. There's... Eventually, when we get into liquid stuff, there's a liquid biofuel, which might be better. But this solid biofuel is one of the, the best we can do right now. It's the slowest burning in biomass burners, so... We can start constructing that from the leaves. Oh, and you know what? Last time we opened, I... I did this inefficiently. Let me show you. If you recall, we unlocked those other biomasses before. Yeah, right here. So we can... can we can create some constructors to just turn leaves into this biomass and then this biomass will be turned into this solid biofuel when we build our power plant. But I'm actually going to include that machine right in the power plant. So I'm not going to worry about doing it right now until we get to building. I could sit and craft this uh, solid biofuel by hand, but it takes it takes a long time to do it. See the 10 ticks to create them, so I'd rather just burn this medium efficient biomass. This will give us a lot of time. As you'll see, it only burns six and two thirds per minute, so. All right, the pod's almost on its way back. You can see it counting down on the top right of the screen right there. Let's pick our next milestone to go for. Let's do, we're gonna do the rest of these first. Do tier one before we go on to tier two anymore. I'm going to put logistics and select it, 
I'm not going to focus on it right now though because I first want to automate what it requires, those plates, those rods, and the wire. Sure, we could build it by hand right now and we could get it unlocked a lot quicker, but I'm going to move at the speed of automation, not my the speed of my desires. So, let's zoop some more. Uh, I spent all the resources in the space or in the drop pod. I, oh, I just love that. Look at it. It's so cool. Around the map, we're going to be able to find a lot of crashed drop pods, which I find very interesting if you think about the lore of the game or where that's going. But inside of those drop pods, we're going to be able to find hard drives that are going to give us alternate recipes. I can't remember if I said that last episode, so just to make that clear. Uh, what, those, what those do is unlock different ways of making the materials. So, for example, a lot of materials require screws, and screws have to be produced in bulk. However, you could theoretically remove the requirement for screws entirely by using alternate recipes. It's just, they just give you different input to get the same output, like the reinforced iron plates, instead of using screws, there's ones that use something else. Uh, so, we will work on getting some of those. As maybe an adventure, we'll go on an outing and maybe collect some slugs and some barrel nuts and some pale berries. See what other kind of creatures we can find. And we'll do that at the end of the episode, I think. For right now, we'll finish zooping up some flooring right here. We'll start automating the basic things uh, that we talked about automating. The plates, the rods, the wire. And then we'll build the power plant. And then... We'll go explore a little. Do realize that's clipping. These are very temporary. Seven. I can only build... I thought I was going to run out of plates first. Alright. We're just about dry on that. So. There we go. We've got plates already automated. This is what I want to accomplish. But I want it over here, so I'm going to have to move those machines. And you know what they say, there's no time like the right now. So let's do it. I'm going to take uh, this down. In addition to holding control, you can just click it and build, start building a dismantle list, essentially. So, done. Let me grab a power line and we'll be on our merry, merry way. Yeah, that'll look okay. Okay, let's check the node. That's impure. If you recall what that means, that's 30 per minute. Iron must be smelted, so... Put a smelter here. I'm gonna make sure we have plenty of room. This will not be permanent. We will redo this. I just want it going right now because we need the resources to progress for our, today's episode, so... Okay, 30 in, which means we just need one directly in. And because that's clipping through the floor, I will first put a line there. That looks a little wonky. But needs must and progress must be made. We have 30 iron ingots to play with now per minute. And it broke fuse. Okay, that awful, awful sound that you just heard was when your max, cons or excuse me, when your consumption, not necessarily the max one, but your actual consumption overtakes your capacity. You pop a fuse, and to restart it, you have to throw the fuse back into place. But it's going to immediately pop again because I did not increase our power production. So, even though I plan to make our biomass power plant very soon, I need it now. So I'm going to make a temporary one again, and we will remove it and move it into the power plant at the right time. Let's get that done. Okay, I handcrafted the items up. 
We can make a biomass burner now. And uh, all you have to do is tie it into the power grid. Uh, you have to give it uh, biomass as well. All right, we have three minutes based on that to finish what we're doing right now, which should be enough. Then I'd like to try to make the chainsaw, which I should queue up so we have that in mind. Yeah, not so bad. Not so bad, it won't take us too much to do that. We have almost all the stuff we need already, so. Oh, right. I did not... We have two power grids right now. There. Now we have... One. And... Our capacity is above our max consumption. So therefore we can't pop another fuse. Unless... This runs out of fuel. Which it will in about three minutes! Let's get going! Oops. Didn't intend to do that. Oh, I made it angry. Ingots. Ingots go to plates. Plates are made in the constructor. I'm gonna leave some room between each of these, just... While this... While this only produces 30, and this is going to require 30, some of the other ones... The iron rods... We, we can produce twice as many if we split the line, and we're going to... Unlock logistics and splitters very soon, so... Planning ahead. No power, no problem. Awesome. I'll put a container at the end as well, but uh, I want it about over there. And there's no room right now, so... Okay, we can make that now, and then it's a race against time. I'm not sure how long that took, but... We... Oh dear. Okay. We need to power the chainsaw with fuel, and the only fuel you can put in a chainsaw is solid biofuel. Well, that's gonna be plenty, though. In fact, four will be enough since we're in a time crunch. Okay, I guess that only took me a minute. Oh, actually, no, I want to clarify again. Uh, I did mention this last episode, but biomass only burns at the rate that you need it. And we're only using 42... Uh, we're only using 22 and a half megawatts right now and it can produce 70, so this isn't actually going at 10 per minute. It's probably going slower. Uh, which is fantastic. Look at this. I'd buy that. There we go. Couldn't find the hitbox. Okay, look at that on the left side right there. Eight limestone, flower petals, some wood, and some leaves. What happens when you do the chainsaw is anything that's immediately around you and the thing you're destroying also get destroyed. So you can actually, see this rock right here? I can actually destroy some of the rocks. Not all, not that one. <laughs> uh, epic fail, that was awesome. There it goes, you saw that one, right? I promise, it did it. It did it. And look at how fast we're gaining wood and leaves. Alright, let's go save our power grid, and then finish logistics, I think, finish logistics, get building, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what we'll do. Okay, there's all the biomass, but since my soda's gone, I'm going to craft the biofuel while I take a quick break. And I'm back, and this is still going. Uh, let's do something more fun though. <clears throat> uh, that was a close one. I actually can't, I don't want to put all of this biofuel into this machine because I want to save a few for my chainsaw. So what I can do is right click to split it in half, or you can right click and hold and get a nice slider like this. So I'm just going to say save 12 for me chainsaw and then the rest will burn for energy. There, now we're topped up and have lots of room, uh, lots of room to grow our factory, so let's do that. How much zooping can we do? Uh, probably a lot if I go pick up some concrete, so let's do that.
Okay. Let's duplicate this. Nothing happened, that was perfect. Oh! First try. I am unable to set the recipes from up here, so we'll have to go down and do that, but... I can run the belts. And I can run the power. good. Once I set the recipes, this will work. So that'll be rods. Copper. Uh, I meant iron. I can read. Okay, and as mentioned, this requires 15 in for 15 out, so what I'm going to be able to do is split this, split the 30 into 15 and 15, and run this machine again once I have that capability. We are going to need more wire, so, or wait, did I, oh, I did. Awesome. Still going to need more wire. Okay, what's next? We need to wait, we have 47 iron rods and we need 150. So I'm going to collect some more biomass and let the machines run because I am going to try to be mostly done handcrafting. So meet you back here in a couple minutes or I'll meet you in the hub, I'll meet you somewhere. Okay, that was a quick outing actually, but that, let me get rid of that sound. That was a quick outing, but I think we'll make a temporary constructor for solid biofuel as well. It's not hard to put up or down. So let's do it right over here. I'm going to need a storage container for the final product. Constructor to do the constructing and another container to hold the biomass. So I'm gonna control left click to send all of that over. Belt that into the machine. Set the machine to biofuel and then power it up if I can find a power line. And... Oh, that's right. This one require this one can take up to 120 per minute, but we're only able to supply 60 per minute. So the best this can do is run at 50% efficiency, meaning we're only going to get 30 per minute, but that's okay. It's just gonna run in the background while I'm doing other things. While we adventure! Zoop! Alright, we've got some... We've got some zoop... I actually, actually, I don't want to zoop anymore right now because... I want to drop the plates off first before I spend them. Okay. Now we can do some more zooping. makes my skin crawl. I'm just kidding, it's not that bad. I would never leave it like this, but while it works, it's gonna be okay. I like that. That should be the series motto. It's, go it's gonna be okay. We're here to have fun. I don't know if that's fun or not. Okay, let me think. Okay, got the copper, and I was just spotted that slug again. Oh, and some more quartz. We talked about that. Uh, I haven't made it very clear what I need it for, and I apologize for that. But honestly, I'll, it'll take a lot of rambling to explain what it'll be much easier to show you after I get the next, not the ne I'm not sure if it's the next, but one of the next milestones. 
So until then, let's just enjoy the fact that we found something cool and new. Look at this thing. Look at the size of this thing. Look at these foundations. This foundation is four meters tall. You know what? I'm going to teach you something real quick. Foundations. See, this is in this section altogether. If I hit five now and I'm on the four foundations, if I tap E, I can switch between everything that's in that same section. And if I hold E, I get a radial. So look at that. A meter. This thing's three feet tall. It's not even... It's longer. Really cool. I've... This has gone on too long. I got a comment on my first video, which surprised me and was awesome. And they said that in Canada, they call it Pop 2. Which is pretty cool. Living in Michigan, I'm actually quite close to Canada. And I didn't know that. Okay, well that fed that machine. It's gonna make us wire. That machine's gonna make us the rods we need for the logistics. Why don't we do a sneaky little peek at what's coming up after that. Field research. It's gonna require screws and then more wire. Oh, and this is, it is. This is when I'm gonna talk about the slugs and the quartz. So that will be coming in just a few minutes. Okay, that actually, that actually didn't take very long at all. And we're ready to complete logistics. And let's see, what did we promise to do today? We're going to finish building some more introductory parts. So I need to make one for screws. I'd like to do screws, wire, and cable. Yeah, that shouldn't take too long. And we'll build a power plant. And then we're t and we'll talk about the slugs and the quartz. Milestone Woo! reach. Conveyor belts can now merge. Yes, we can merge and split now. So, under logistics, we now have the lifts. Those can go up and down. Merge and split. So, we'd also unlocked walls, but never seen them. Let's just check for anything else new. Perfect. I don't have nearly enough screws. We can do it though. We've got three minutes to get all the required elements and we can launch it as soon as it lands. Shouldn't be a problem at all. This is not going to take anywhere near three minutes. If we have rods, let's check. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, now that it's getting automated, it's stockpiling. We'll have enough. Let's find a place for our power plant. Need it to be close. I like the idea of having it up here, because then when we get jump pads soon, I'll have a reason to use one, and that's one of my goals. Yeah, it can bounce us from down there up to here. Now, if I click on the foundations, remember we talked about the grid. So now, to ensure that I could, if I wanted to, connect this and that up, I can just hold control, and anywhere on the map, we can be sure that we can directly connect evenly, smoothly, straightly, uniformly, perfectly connect the foundations together. So this is as good a place as any. Zoop! And let's go get that snail. Oh, it's a slug. Not a snail. Yeah, I knew that. Power slugs. They're really cool. Not to spill the beans early, but those little guys are what are going to allow us to increase the productivity of machines. So you collect those, you turn them into power shards, and then you can increase by basically by 50% each slug you put in to a maximum of three. So, all right, I actually want this a little bit higher because I need to keep going in that direction to... Nope, you know what? I'm just... It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I like that. I can... Oh, we're not gonna make it! 
We're not gonna make it. Oh, I messed up. One second. Oh, uh, we're about one second too late. And I forgot to build the screws. Oh, we failed that challenge. Uh, <laughs> All right, we just unlocked the MAM. I can make all that, no problem. Let's queue that up and gather our parts. Okay, we're back. And I have all the components needed. Let's put it over here. All right, the MAM, which stands for the Molecular Analysis Machine. Interact with it. And now, you can basically see these are some more tech trees. Check it out. I click on alien organisms, and uh, we're familiar with this one, hog research. Here's some different types of those critters. Stingers or the spiders, spitters. They're called plasma spitters, something like that. The hatchers are little flying crab creature things. All right, so check it out. Nutrients right here, barrel nuts. I need five of them, I happen to have five. Start research, it only takes three seconds for this one. But look at how the tree works. Boom. We've unlocked something. This one lets us scan for barrel nuts. This one lets us scale scan for pale berries. This one lets us scan for bacon agaric. And then this one is just the barrier to get to this one. And if I'm not mistaken, this will be some sort of healing item. Power slugs. All right, one, we have two. We need one blue power slug, we have two, so let's research that. All right, overclock production. This is what I've been waiting to show. It will let us create power shards. Uh, actually, this lets us create power shards. Now we need to turn a power shard in and it allows overclocking. I don't have quite enough wire yet, so I'll show that to you after. This requires a yellow slug. Uh, the, the yellows are more valuable. They turn into more power shards. Each one does. And then there's another type down there. This will allow us to use our scanner to do slug scanning, which is something we're definitely going to do. Here's that quartz. This is what I was trying to ramble on about, about that rock at the beginning. Confused myself. Rambled on too long last episode. And now, because of this, I can scan for quartz. And look at, this is what I wanted quartz for the most, blade runners. Blade runners are going to let me run much faster, jump much higher. And I'm going to try to get them as soon as possible. They require silica, uh, which is the note above it. And those are called modular frames, those metal cube frames. We don't have those unlocked yet. But we will, it's very soon, but not today. Maybe that could be the feature of next episode. Write that down. Right, right. I don't have a secretary. Three seconds. Sometimes they take like five minutes, but nothing too crazy. The uh, important note, the hard drives. You'll see that right up here. I was telling you about those drop pods and how they've, they've crashed around them. Well, to open them up, you have to supply something most of the time. Sometimes they're ready to be opened automatically, but sometimes they want five modular frames or 30 megawatts of power. So you have to provide that stuff before you can open it. But when you open it, you get a hard drive, and you bring the hard drive to the molecular analysis machine. It takes 10 minutes to study the data on it, and then you get to pick from three alternate recipes. Well, this is filling up nicely. 402 pieces of concrete. Okay, splitter. Uh, you can put it on a foundation or on the ground or something like that. So when you want it on the belt, you have to aim pretty carefully. But that line indicator is a good sign. There. So it has one input and three outputs. It will evenly divide the input belt into three equal outputs. Uh, so if we only use two of them, it will divide them just into two equal outputs. So uh, place our constructor right there. And that has to make iron rods. And then that one. We'll turn those iron rods right into screws. Oh, and this only needs 10 per minute. Okay, so we're actually gonna be feeding at 15. So what I will do, and I will teach you eventually, I, 
are the ways to balance this all out. There's some pretty easy ways. There, there's a way where you can split everything up using math and splitters and making every line the exact amount you need. Or there's a much easier way to just overflow the system, which we call a manifold, and just let the machines take how much they need from a feed line. It's easier to plan out the whole system because you just it just takes what it needs. Every machine will eventually fill up and only use what's required. I talked a lot about how what buttons to press and things last uh, episode, but if you press escape, go into the options, and go into key bindings right here, you can find all of those here. For example, somebody asked me how I did that heart thing in the last episode, and it's with this emote wheel. Press T and bring that up. Uh, one thing I, I did change when I was opening this to, uh, when I was getting the episode ready, was I left con copy factory clipboard as control C, but then I switched paste to alt thumb mouse button to make it a lot easier for me to run down a line of machines pasting the same thing. Um, so that's something to be aware of. H, this is new in the game. You can hit H to holster your items. I think I might have said that last time. But anyway, if you don't know how to do something that you've seen me do or can't remember, go into your key bindings and play around. You might want to adjust it. I, I'm going to make a bin right here, even though I want the bins somewhere else entirely. Because I'm, I've got an idea of the way I want to run this. Okay, we've got a hard clearance issue right there, so... I'm just gonna go with it. We have power plant to build. Should we go back to that? I want 16 biomass burners to start, and that, that will be all we would need until we get to coal power. I suspect. I'm gonna let this run, gather up the resources that we need, and then we'll take on building our power plant. Our biomass power plant that I will certainly tear down <laughs> once we get to coal. One thing I forgot to mention when it happened was that when we unlocked the MAM here in field research, we also gained our normal three inventory slots, but we gained a hand slot. So you'll see in the inventory now, we actually have two hand slots and you can just switch your item with the mouse wheel pretty great. Okay, I've gathered the materials required to finish the power plant that we plan to build. I need to add a little bit more foundations and then we can get the biomass burners laid down with a couple extra machines that I think are useful. Since I want to build 16 machines, I'd like to have 8 going this way, which I do. And I'm going to need a little bit more room. I'm going to need a little bit more room for the machines. But I'm not sure where or how I'm going to do that, so let's just put that on pause for a moment. Place the biomass burner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one, but flip the other way. There. That looks nice. Nice enough. Now we just need to connect them to power and then build the little setup I have planned. This doesn't need to be amazing. I think I'll just run it right down the center. Shouldn't be in the way for filling these. There. Now they're all connected. We have power grid. I'm going to run the lines just down here and then that way. Eventually we're going to unlock wall-mounted power poles. And I'll redo this because you can put them on the ceilings and stuff like that too. Make it look nicer instead of running it down the middle and just out the side. But for right now, it's going to be okay. Let's grab that. Uh, let's grab a storage container, throw it right here, right at the edge, there. So it's the output's coming this way, which is what I want. I want the output down here. And now let's try something new. Let's hit logistics. We've run out of fuel, but that's okay. We're, the power plant's just about done. Take a conveyor lift. Uh, I'm going to click to attach that end, and now you can adjust the length, and whether it's going up or down. 
come right down here and I'd better leave, I'd better add some foundations first. One constructor. I didn't look at the rates of these and I can't remember off the top of my head. So I'm going to just have one constructor here. This is going to be for turning biomass of either type into solid biofuel. Once the leaves or wood are turned into biomass, it doesn't differentiate between them anymore. So that'll be fine. And as soon as we can upgrade to Mark II belts, I can increase the speed of this belt. So this is gonna need power. And our previous two are gonna need power. And we should connect the grid. There. All right, another constructor. One right there. And one right there. Okay, now we need a merger. So we'll place that in line there. This is all crooked, but the episode's running long, so I'm going to just keep it for right now and fix it in a couple of minutes. Leaves, wood. Eventually, for something like this, that we have specific recipes or something like that, or maybe we want to label our storage, we'll get signs at one point, but before we get signs, I'm going to show you what I like to do. After I lay down some storage containers. So, there's one. There's a set. It's not. The power pole's in the way. Alright, so this is wood, 60 per minute. So we can just fill this up with wood, but to label it, you can go to your inventory. I like to just separate one single piece and just drag it off your inventory like this and you will drop it on the ground. And there, it's an indicator that that is for wood. And this will be for leaves. There, now we've got some makeshift labels. It's not great, but it's good enough. Control click gets all the wood at once in there. Now we need power. Since I disconnected it when I moved that power pole. Okay, now we just need a little bit of power. Well, there, we have plenty of fuel to add to it. Flip the switch, and just like that, we have fuel being made. It's going to be sent up there, right where the biomass burners are, and we'll be able to grab it right out of that container, fill up the biomass burners, and keep the energy going. Okay, last thing we're gonna do is go on a quick adventure, and I thought we would go hunting for a yellow slug. They're a bit more rare than the blue ones, and I think that would be a great next step. Yeah, but well, this came up earlier, the object scanner. We can make that, no problem. Okay, a new toy to play with. I'm reticent to admit that I don't think I've ever actually used the object scanner more than just building the first one to look at it and then try it out, so. Yeah, okay, so you right click to switch through what you're scanning for, and then, yeah, left click and hold to switch to this. Okay, power slugs, that's what we want. Let's head up, well that was quick. Okay, so there's the highest strength. Let's go that way. This event. What the? <laughs> oh. I wonder if I cut a tree? This is, was surely sitting on something, right? Yeah. It's not yellow, though. Let's keep going. Aha! A yellow slug. 
This adventure is going to be short-lived, but we'll have another next episode. I'm guessing this thing is protected by some of the monsters. There. That was too quick. Let's also go... Let's go check out our new biome. We haven't left the grasslands here yet. Let's go... See what we see without falling into the abyss this way. And, yep, I'm going to try to make some parachutes soon. Pretty much if you just pick a direction and keep heading that way, you'll surely hit a different biome, right? Hey, it's our friend, Jean-Jacques Francois Jacques Jean. That's what I'm going to call him. JJ Frankie JJ. Love it. I stole that from Letterkenny. There we go. As we crest over this little hill, I can definitely see what must be a different biome. I don't have all the biome names memorized, but perhaps we can look them up and learn them together as we go. Be easier for discussion. Excuse me, sir. Is that another slug right up there? I think it is. Oh, and what is this? It's like a. Whoa, I almost walked right off that edge. Look at that. Oh, and some. These are some of the spitters. Let's check them out. See what he can do. Holy cow, he's fast! Oh, sent me flying. Oh, they're really cool. This update, they, they've changed the textures. Now there's different, of, of the same monster, there's different skins for them. It's really cool. How's that? Plasma spitter remains. Really, really cool little area. I like this crater. What is this limestone here? Limestone there. Another yellow slug. That's four power shards, if I'm not mistaken. And more limestone. Okay, this is going to be a concrete factory. Write that down. Look at that thing. That's, oh, that startled me. Oh, and a, look at that! I just want the hard drive, please. This is the crashed freighter that I was telling you about. Oh, and I hear something. Alright, these are going to keep spitting out these kamikaze mosquito thing. Crab. Losing my train of thought, trying to stay alive. Ooh, he got me. <laughs> Tickles. Alright, screws. So here's the... Okay, I gotta deal with this. I've almost died. I've almost died. Alright, so around a drop pod. Not drop pod. I keep saying drop pod. This is a crashed fix-it freighter. Around the freighters, you can find components. Sometimes, if you go a little bit further away the starting area, you're going to be able to find some components. Some late-game components, even. Which are pretty awesome. So, oh, here's a good example. Circuit boards. We're not going to be able to make those until we have oil and plastic and... But there, I just found some for free. And they're going to be worth a good bit of points in the awesome sink, which I'm going to teach you about next episode. Here's the requirement right here. 12 screws only. We have that covered. So you can just open the hatch, steal that. Data on the hard drive has been salvaged and can be repurposed to unlock an alternate recipe. Salvaging yeah. your hard drive. Alternate recipes in the man. I'll show you about that. Anyway, that'll be for next episode. We found a hard drive, we found two yellow slugs, and that awesome future concrete factory location. And that's it. We'll do more next time. Episode over.